Can I be tired? It's morning. Woo! Oh, to the candy cane. We are going to kill it. We are going to slaughter everybody else. No, I'm not. I'm not violent at all. Hi, everyone. It's time for another vlog already. I have my tea in my twinkle mug. Isn't that so cute? I have put a little eggnog, not alcoholic eggnog, but just regular old eggnog in my tea because I find it gives it a certain holiday je ne sais quoi. Yes, so delicious. So I'm actually starting a, another vlog. I don't know how many vlogs I'm going to do this month. I just like to wing it. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, my name's Jess. Hi. Nice to meet you. And I talk about book, uh, what kind of books? Hmm. Fiction. I like a lot of different genres of books. I really am into thriller right now. I read classics. I do like enjoy a good class. I don't know. The last book that I just read, if you checked out my last vlog, it was a mystery thriller, but it had some pretty steamy romance in it. And I was like, oh, I wonder if I should try some romance. So that's a possibility. You know, I'm open. But we're here today. I'm here today because I'm on the second leg of my reading readathon, a marathon for the Reindeer Readathon. And I haven't quite finished The Dutch House. It's fantastic. So I, f I figure I'm going to finish it soon. I'm about three quarters of the way through. My next three picks, which are The Idiot. So if you were here for when I chose my TBR, my TBR, my. TBR and my choices for the Reindeer Readathon have changed only slightly. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but if you were, if you checked out the video for when I made my choices for the Readathon, this was the book that I chose by random selection and I used random number generator. I also realized that it might be kind of fun to listen to this one on audiobook. So I've started listening to it on audiobook. Sorry, it's hard to get the light, keep the light, the light is... It's a winter day, so the light is quite unpredictable. It's actually snowing outside. Getting into winter weather here in Montreal. It's been very cold this week. It was minus 18. Ouch! Chilly. Lots of ice. Everyone running around trying not to break their necks out there. <laughs> very much enjoying the first part of this book. It. I don't know if it's autobiographical. I think it might. It's very funny. It's about a young woman, the child of Turkish immigrants, who is attending Harvard. Her name is Celine. It's just about her experience as a student at Harvard. I think she's in the literature program. She's definitely taking arts and literature classes. She's taking a Russian class. It's just about the friendships that she develops, in particular with this woman, Svetlana, and this boy that she starts to correspond with named Ivan. And I'm not at the point in the book yet where this happens, but I think she leaves and goes on a summer either internship or a summer break uh, with Yvonne. Uh, she definitely has her own voice, like she has her own unique writing style, which I'm enjoying. And listening to the audiobook is also great because it's narrated by the author. So I'm kind of listening to the audiobook, audiobook and reading parts of it. And yeah, so that's, I'm hoping to finish that in the next couple of days. I'm going to take you along with me. Okay, so that's, that was the 30 point -er. And then because I'm listening to the audiobook, there's a bonus of Christmas Carol of 15 points. So that's, if, when I'm finished, this is going to be another 45 points for my team. Just slightly competitive. Uh, and then the next book is, I think it's 15 points, is my choice for for my five star prediction. And if I overthink this, if I overthink this, it is possible this might not get five stars. I don't know. I want it to be a five star. So I guess I'm saying it's a five star prediction. I do have some other books in my library that I think could be five star predictions, but it's a prediction, right? We just don't know. I might fall in love with this book or I might find that it's not my favorite Otessa Mashve. Uh, the only other one I read is Eileen, so I didn't feel like I could pick her as my favorite author because I feel like you have to read more than one. Maybe, maybe not. Like maybe you could just have one that you really, really love and then you have a favorite author. But I think for my favorite author, I'm probably going to read Daphne du Maurier. That'll be coming up and I might read it on an e-reader because there's an extra point for that. But anyhow, for this vlog, I'm going to read My Year of Rest and Relax. 
Relaxation by Otessa Amashve. I don't know if people know about Otessa Amashve. She wrote another book uh, called Eileen, which I really loved. It was a it was about a woman who, well, anyway, I'm not going to go into the story of Eileen because we're talking about this, this book today. Uh, this book is about a woman who is depressed and she's wealthy, it takes place around the 2000s, and I don't really know that much more about it. I don't know if she like takes a bunch of pills or experiments with different ways to be happy. I hear it's a very dark sense of humor. I don't really know what the plot is, but I'm very much looking forward to this because I'm curious about it and I, I just want to see what she does with this book. So I will be reading it for the blog and I'm excited to share my reading experience of that one with you. And then here's where I really switched everything up <laughs> because I was going to read Home Going by Yaj Yassi as my for the prompt for uh, take a cupid which is take a shot at reading a new author it's worth 25 points but i don't know there's a lot of authors that are new to me that i haven't read yet that i want to try there's a couple of classic like i was thinking about reading a james baldwin i was thinking about reading a tony morrison i was thinking about reading sally rooney because i've never read any sally rooney and then i remembered that I went on um, book shopping and I found this I was really into buying thrillers and mysteries and I found there was one that was being promoted by this woman Catherine Stedman her new book was being promoted and I was like oh I should read that and then I read the cover the slip cover and and there was someone quoted saying like don't bother read her first one and then you can go down the rabbit hole or go you know then you can she can become one of your favorite authors or you'll be hooked on her books or something like that so I was like, oh, I should get her first one and read the first one. And, and because it's a readathon, I feel like it might be a little bit quicker. I don't know. I got really bogged down with Bernadine Evaristo and I, I'm reticent to get really bogged down also because I'm reading. I kind of just want to read something, <laughs> I don't know, a little more a page turner. And by all accounts, this book is a page turner. Something in the Water by Catherine Stedman, apparently. The title really gives away the plot line. <laughs> Apparently, there are a couple scuba diving and they see something in the water. And then from there, it's a series of bad decisions, twists and turns, and high paced drama, which I am down for. So I know I kind of switched things up and I really do want to read Yad Yassi at some point, and I may get to Yad Yassi before the end of the year. Doubtful, but I could. This is, this is what I'm going for for this reading vlog. And if I finish them all, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to because it's still only, so we're not even in the middle of December yet. So that'll be 80, another 85 points for our team. Woohoo! Oh, and I forgot, I forgot. I was going to do some unboxing as well. I was going to do the unboxing first before I talked about the books I was going to read. Also, please stick around for this vlog because we're going to be decorating the Christmas tree. I got a holiday puzzle out. We just made cookies. I mean, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very festive feeling. Okay, so this, I know exactly what this is because I've ordered from these girls before. They're Canadian, which is so great, on Etsy. But I found them on Instagram, I think. Uh, Happy Gang Co. I'll link their... Um, Oh, it's so cute the way it's packaged. I'm not gonna actually take the packaging, the wrapping apart because it's a gift. But it, it looks like this. And of course the quote is, tis the damn season. So if you know, you know, and with a cute little star, tis the damn season in red, that is so cute, I'm so excited. To give that as a present. Tis the damn season. I want a tis the damn season sweatshirt. I want the gifts I give to other people. Do you ever feel that way? Does that ever cross your mind? I'm so excited to wrap that up and put it under the tree. Ah! Okay, and here's the other one that came, the other box that came today. I love this time of year because so much stuff is coming in the mail. I think this might be gifts from my cousin. It says, it's pretty exciting because it's from Birmingham. It says Royal Mail. You can see it says Royal Mail with a crown. You gonna come and say hi to the camera? Fee fee. Get my dog to come and say hi. She's very camera shy. Okay, so I'm gonna open, I got the scissors. 
This is quite tightly bound. <gasps> okay. What is this? Oh, wait a minute. How could this be? It's not a gift from my cousins. It's something I ordered way a long time ago. It's taken forever to come. And it's so funny because it's like it's more Taylor Swift merch. Oh my God, that's so funny that that came at the same time. It's so serendipitous. Okay, so this mug, I ordered this for my daughter's birthday. And I guess I'm going to be giving it for Christmas. But look, this is so hilarious to me. Look what it says. In this house... We listen to Taylor Swift and cry. It's true. I'm sorry. But when Red came out, there was a lot of crying. A lot of crying. A lot. I thought that was pretty accurate. So, okay, I didn't know that's what that was. I thought it was like gifts from my cousins. I don't know. Maybe my cousins aren't sending me gifts this year. <laughs> but I can't wait to, to put that one under the tree either. I'm wondering what, what her reaction will be. Okay, there's one other thing that I want to talk about before I sign off and get reading. Can we just talk about these? I picked these up at Costco. They're white chocolate flavored and peppermint pretzel crisps. They're so good. They're insane. Look how cute. First of all, I love chocolate covered pretzels. It's like my favorite combination. And then look at these. These have little candy cane white chocolate. Oh, they're so yummy. So yeah, nothing is sponsored, but these are so good. And if you dip them in your little tea, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mmm, yummy. Mmm, 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 yummy. Okay, everyone. Welcome to another vlog. Welcome to another vlog. If any of my Team Candy Game um, beauties are watching, we got this. We got this. Tell me what you're reading. Tell me how it's going. If you're not signed up for the Ranger Readathon, tell me what you're reading. Tell me if you've read any of these. Tell me what you think. I love hearing from you in the comments below. Bye for now. I'll check back with you soon. Hello. It's a little bit late at night, so the lighting is not so fantastic as it can be. But I'm going to work on my puzzle, guys. Look, I got a puzzle. Got a real fun Christmassy puzzle to work on today. Tonight, I'm going to listen to my audiobook. I'm going to work on my puzzle. I'm listening to the audiobook for idiot. I'm enjoying it so much. I tell you, when you do an audiobook or you listen to an audiobook, man, does it go by a lot faster or what? See, I do wear my toque in the house. I always wear my toque in the house. It's so cold here. I don't know if I mentioned that it's freezing here. It's like minus 18. Got to keep the hand, hand cream going because it's cold. My hands be dry. Did I mention I got a haircut? Look, I got a little haircut. All right, enough about me. What's been happening? The tree arrived. Very exciting. But it's a natural tree, and it was completely frozen on one side. So the guy really nicely, like, put it in my tree stand, but it needs to defrost. So, like, all the branches need to come down, and then I will show you the spectacular tree. Yeah, we're going to decorate the tree. I don't know what day we're going to decorate the tree. Things are a little loosey-goosey around here. Sorry, that's my dog drinking her water very noisily. <laughs> She's thirsty. Hello, everyone. So we have a pretty fun day planned. Uh, we're going to be heading downtown to do... Uh, a little bit of shopping. We're going to go and have some sushi for lunch. It's a tradition in our family to go to the museum and buy an ornament. And we're going to keep that tradition alive. Normally we go to the museum bistro, but unfortunately it's closed due to the pandemic. So we won't be doing that. But we're going to go and get some sushi instead. And I think it's going to be a really nice day. It's very cloudy out. Uh, and then I'm going to meet up with my girlfriend and we're going to go for a walk on the mountain. I haven't started these two books yet because I got sucked into The Idiot. It's an exploration of uh, this 
girl, our main character, Celine's a uh, freshman year at Harvard, and she's a liberal arts student, so she's taking courses in literature. Uh, she takes a Russian class, and she meets a woman there named Svetlana, who she becomes friends with. And she also starts up a relationship, a friendship, and a correspondence with a guy named Ivan, who I think we're, we're really to believe that she's in love with at this point. I'm almost at part two, so I'm about 200 pages in. I'm about halfway through. The only problem is that Ivan has a girlfriend, so that's a bit obnoxious. I find that a bit obnoxious. I think that some of the commentary that she's making, albeit not deeply, like a lot of this is so... Like there's a lot of dry humor, but it's also a lot of this is like little vignettes. She's writing in sort of little vignettes of observations and it's a bit scattered. And I think it's meant to represent kind of the brain of an 18 year old and possibly the brain of an idiot <laughs> or that at that age, maybe we're all idiots in a sense. I mean, I, an idiot savant, maybe, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what she's getting at, but I, I, I will formulate that opinion, I'm sure, as I go along. But I mean, honestly, she seems to have her own voice. Like I really appreciate her voice. I'm having trouble getting this earring in my ear. But I appreciate that she has her own voice and that her wit and her humor are evident. For some people, that's not enough. You know, we need to have like a, a moving plot and a lot of really interesting things that happen in the book. But so far, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with just the description of kind of you know, academic life at an Ivy League school and the kinds of thoughts. It's so interesting because I had reviewed second place and I really didn't like that in second place. I even said that I thought it was pretentious. And I think a lot of people think this book is pretentious. But for whatever reason, this is just re resonating much more to, with me as being more genuine in a certain way. Something is, is helping me to connect a lot more with this writing and the observations that we make. I mean, this is so up, up my alley. Might be up your alley too. So they're in a cafe. She's in a cafe with Yvonne. And this is page 175. And they're listening to uh, The Cranberries happens to be playing. Uh, so I'll just read from there. And you can get a sense of her writing and what I mean when I say it's kind of these anecdotal observations, but with very dry humor and very witty. She writes, all around us people were laughing and roaring so loudly that we had to lean in close and shout past each other's ears. Linger by the Cranberries was playing in the background. You've got me wrapped around your finger, the, the singer warbled over and over in a girly, excessively beautiful voice. It felt ominous to me, the aestheticized girliness, infatuation, and weakness. Do you like the Cranberries? Yvonne asked. I don't really like this song, I said. Do you? I like it. He was pulling apart and counting a wad of fives and singles. I have enough money for two more each. Two more beers. I realized he meant two more beers. My heart sank. I had thought getting a drink meant you only had to have one drink. <laughs> I can't, I said. Why not? I have to get up early. He stared at me. It's not even 11 yet. I felt so unhappy. I just didn't understand why we couldn't skip the part where I drank two more pints of beer. Well, I don't want to push you, Yvonne said, somehow, ironically, as if alluding to the scenario known to us both in which boys pushed girls, and which was so obviously not what was going on. I was embarrassed, because I felt that by refusing to drink, by being afraid to drink, I was implying that I thought that was what was going on and that he was going to take advantage of me. A phrase it was impossible to imagine without quotation marks. How about if we, if I get one more beer and we share it, Yvonne said. I said, okay. He went to the bar, linger ended, and was succeeded by Smells Like Teen Spirit, a song I liked because it seemed so companionable and free and simultaneously negative and cheerful. I just feel like that's an original voice that I'm interested in reading. So despite the fact that we're, we're a little lacking in plot, I am enjoying the, this voice, this perspective. So we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll report back. And that's my little update for the reading vlog. Get some reading done later today. Get started on either one or both of the other books. And I'll be vlogging for the rest of the weekend. Oh yeah, we're gonna be decorating the tree later too. So stick around for that.
I've been dealing with a lot of bureaucracy this morning. <laughs> Always so much fun. And I know everyone's promoting this all over the internet, but there we go. That's better. This Laneige. This one is it's a sleep mask for your lips. And this one is Ginger Snap. I think you might think it's really sweet, but it's actually really not. It just has this hint of ginger to it and it's really nice. So I think I'm going to be giving that in a little bundle with some other like hand creams and body uh, lotions to the ladies who work at the residence for my parents because I think it's a nice uh, little, nice little gift. Wasn't going to talk about that at all. Here I am talking about that instead. Oh and I'm also going to make, I'm going to make ginger cookies today. Spicy ginger cookies today because the holiday season is fast upon us, as everyone knows, and I haven't done any holiday baking yet. I'm gonna update you on my reading. It's going so well this time around. Something in the water. Who knew? So this is written by, I mean, I guess some people knew. I just didn't know. She's a new to me author. It's written by Katherine Stedman, who I didn't realize this. She played Mabel Lane. Fox, Mabel Lane Fox in Downton Abbey. Mabel Lane Fox, is that one of the main characters in Downton Abbey? Wow, I should really look that up. Let's find out. Okay, so she's not like the one of the, I don't think she's one of the big. I should watch Downton Abbey. I don't really watch it. <gasps> she's such a good writer. I'm impressed by this woman's writing. It's so impressive. I've been thoroughly enjoying this read. It's the kind of mystery story where the character just keeps on making bad decision after bad decision. <laughs> Perhaps we all make bad decisions. So looking back on it, uh, maybe we see when we've made bad decisions, but this character you just you're reading and you're thinking Please don't do that. Please don't do that. And there are a lot of Indications that the character is making bad decisions because There you know, there are things like oh, you know I shouldn't be talking about this on the phone the phone could be being tapped and then like a couple of chapters later They're talking on the phone about something they shouldn't be talking about on the phone, that kind of thing So there's lots of reminders of the things that probably they shouldn't be doing But it's definitely one of those uh, stories where the character Really is getting themselves into hot water. So it's not about sharks Hate to give you the spoiler, but it's not about sharks What happens is that this couple on their honeymoon finds a mysterious bag in uh, during a dive. Oh no, there are some papers, they find papers in the water and then they decide to dive to see where the papers came from and in the end what gets discovered. And so if you don't want any spoilers at all, you need to pause <laughs> because I am gonna reveal some of the information about the book. I won't reveal everything, but I'm gonna reveal some of it. I don't know any everything because I'm only through, I'm not finished. What happens is that she and her husband discover a bag and the bag is full of contraband and they discover a plane that a plane has crashed and then there's some there's all this moral debate back and forth about the decisions that they make moving forward from there like whether they should call the police whether they should hand the bag in whether they should keep what they found uh, whether they should try to learn more about the which are clearly criminals who own the bag Will people be coming after them? And that's spliced in with the story about her documentary that she's making, where she's following three criminals when they're released from prison, one of whom is a, is a real hardcore gang leader who she ultimately turns to for help. Uh, which is obviously like a terrible decision. And then all through this as well, I feel very suspicious of the husband because the character is written from the perspective of Erin, the wife, and she's keeping secrets from her husband. And then as we're going along, we're kind of realizing he's keeping secrets from her as well. So this is a juicy mystery. There are lots of little twists and turns that keep you wondering what's happening. So far, we really don't know what the end is gonna be, except that we do know that the husband dies because the opening scene is her digging the grave for her husband. Did she kill her husband? Did the gangsters kill her husband? What's going on here? 
let's find out, right? The one thing I would say too is that uh, she's crossed a line at a certain point after having found this contraband from being like a good person to becoming a morally great character because she wants to keep this contraband and she wants to be able to do it without the consequences, the legal con consequences or the potential consequences of having stolen it from gangsters. <laughs> so there, th she writes about this too and it's interesting because her whole documentary is about the morality of these criminals like who because one of them euthanized her mom and that's why she was in prison one of them like tortured and killed people so that's why he's in prison and one of them was involved in a riot and has been radicalized and is now going to syria and that's why she's in prison so she's pondering all of this a little bit like she has a bit of self-reflection so she writes sitting across from charlotte McEnroy in her lovely family kitchen i wonder what i am now Less than a month ago, I was just an average person, a civilian, someone with no angle. I belonged on the good side of the table, and on the other side were the bad people. Whether they were innately bad or just bad because of the choices they made was a, the choices they made was a subject of theoretical debate. But either way, they were different from me, different to, to the core. I was a normal person. Now it's Lottie on the other side of the table. But was I ever a normal person? Because I really haven't changed that much inside, have I? I think the same way, I act the same way, I want what I want. I've only acted in line with the way I have always lived my life. Was that all wrong? Am I all wrong? I have broken a lot of laws, not serious ones. I hope, but ones that mean I should definitely be in prison. <laughs> so she's starting to realize that the decisions that she's making are totally illegal. So I don't know if she's gonna end up in prison. I don't know if she's gonna have a reckoning. We don't know how it's gonna end. I have a few ideas, but we don't know how it's gonna end, like 70 pages from the end, so I will let you know. Fabulous book. I'm definitely gonna read more of her work. I'm really excited that I discovered her as a new to me author for the readathon. So thanks, Reindeer Readathon, for that prompt. Pretty exciting stuff enjoying that book so so much a real surprise so that was lovely uh, next i'm going to talk about my year of rest and relaxation so this one started off a little iffy for me i thought oh no not like another i don't know what it is about the writing that turns me off but there she has something in her writing style that's really crass that does turn me off i don't think it's cool or anything i don't know it just turns me off so i almost give up like I was about 70 pages in and I was like, this is just not doing it for me. Like it's about a woman who wants to sleep the rest of her life and finds a psych psychiatrist to prescribe her medications. Although some of it is funny, like I was laughing through some of it and I was thinking about the commentary that she was making. But I was, was starting to wonder like, is this gonna go anywhere? Like it just seemed a bit repetitive and I was starting to feel like I didn't think it was going anywhere until around the 100 page mark, which I'm glad I stuck to the 100 page mark because now I'm feeling this novel a lot more because she has gone to uh, Riva, her friend's mother's funeral. And what you come to see at that point in the novel is that this is a story about grief. I thought it was a story about depression, but I think it's more a story about grief, which I'm here for. And I think that exploration about grief has been something that's been happening quite a bit in the literary world, more so perhaps than in the past. And I'm down for that. I'm interested in that. I'm dealing with a lot of grief myself. So that part has been great like i've been enjoying reading it from that point on she writes i lay awake for a long time it was like sitting in a cinema after the lights go down waiting for the previews to begin but nothing was happening i regretted the coffee i sensed reva's, mi reva's misery in the room with me it was the particular sadness of a young woman who has lost her mother complex and angry and soft yet oddly hopeful i recognized it but I didn't feel it inside of me. The sadness was just floating around in the air. It became denser in the graininess of, of the shadows. The obvious truth was that Reva had loved her mother in a way that I hadn't loved mine. My mother hadn't been easy to love. So it, at this point, I'm more interested, like I'm more invested because I think it's complicated. I think that grief is complicated and I think that it can lead to depression and it's interesting because what she's doing this medicating herself is in an effort to 
escape the grief that she feels for the death of her parents. Her father and mother died really close in, in the timeline to one another in the story. So she's trying to process the grief, but it's too painful. So she's trying to escape it. So that's kind of makes a little bit more sense to me. At first, I thought it was just someone who just couldn't handle society, which is in and of itself a commentary that's made like society is such a so ridiculous. And I could go into a bit more of a deep dive, I think, on it, but I just wanted to update you to that point and we'll see what happens as I finish uh, this one. It's also going very quickly. The Idiot. Okay, so The Idiot, I mean, I don't have as much more to say about The Idiot so far. It's a little bit of the same. <laughs> The same is continuing. I'm about I'm at 250 pages and she's now in Paris. They're in Paris and this guy that she is in love with, Yvonne, has, clearly has a girlfriend, has told his girlfriend that Celine doesn't mean anything to him and yet he's followed her to, well I don't know about followed her, but he's he's appeared in Paris, like he was on the plane uh, going to Paris when she was going to Paris and now there's a lot of discussion about what is this like art do you hate yourself like her friend Svetlana is saying like you know you have self all this self-loathing and why would you in be involved with someone who you know treats you like that and has a girlfriend and a lot of questions about your self-worth I stood beside I Yvonne hi I said he didn't look at me happy birthday he said I didn't recognize you because of your haircut, I said. His gloom seemed to intensify. That's why I got the haircut. I thought that was funny, but he didn't laugh. I didn't know you were going to Paris, I said. I didn't know you were going to Paris, he said. Then we stood there not saying anything. Well, see you later, I said. I guess so, he said. That wasn't so bad, was it? asked Svetlana afterwards. I don't know, I said. He sounded angry. You always think everyone is angry. Come on, don't be morose. She put her arm around my shoulders. I tried to find out the situation from Emery, but she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know why he's here. They just met by chance in the airport. She doesn't even know what dogs she's walking or where she's going to stay, I pointed out. Why would she know his plans? Well, I thought it would cheer you up that at least you're not going, at least they're not going to Paris together. I mean, she is really beautiful. We rejoined Robin and Bill. Bill kept asking questions. Who's this guy? What's his name? That's his name? Cillian likes him? He turned to me. Why do you look like that? You should be happy. A lot of things can happen in an airplane at night, 30,000 feet above the ocean. Just so like, such the typical awkward, what do you do when people aren't honest and open about how they feel and there's some weirdness and manipulation going on and you don't know how to like you know you want to make like you know she wants to have him like her so she's trying to impress him but doesn't want to impress him like that pull push and pull of wanting someone to like you but also not wanting to have to convince them to like you that is happening here between the two of them and um and yeah, so they are in Paris now and Yvonne has followed her to Paris, is on the plane with her to Paris. We're not really sure what his plans are. She doesn't reveal that, but he's there nonetheless and they have a conversation about a night where they were together and it didn't end so well and he had to go home and he told his girlfriend about Celine and told her that he told his girlfriend that he wasn't interested. And I think they break up. Anyhow, there's a lot of that like back and forth happening between these two. I'm still enjoying it. And I will give you more info in the wrap up when I wrap it up. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still enjoying it. But it is slightly confusing the way she's writing it. Like you're not, and I guess that's how you're supposed to feel like. And also the name, the idiot, obviously they're, they're behaving like idiots. You know, they're not really behaving very, like it's silly the way that they're behaving. This unrequited young love is so silly and it's so difficult and it's agonizing. Like I think she captures how agonizing the situation is for the main character and even for the for Yvonne the dude. So I don't know, it's good. It's capturing like a time of life really very well. I also got a package today, everyone. 
This, I believe, is a gift that I ordered. What is in the box? Oh, I'm so excited. This is so great. Okay, so this is a book that came all the way to me from the UK. A book that came all the way from the UK. It's only slightly damaged. What are you going to do, right? So this is my very first, my very first, which I'm going to be giving as a gift, uh, Persephone. It's really pretty. Persephone, Pers I think. Yeah, Persephone Books from London. So it's got, this is the cover. Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini. Hope I'm saying her name right. Uh, this was on a wish list. So I know this person wants this book and I know this person would not buy this book for themselves because you've got to order it. Obviously I'm going to borrow it. Oh look, it even has the number of the printing, number 126. Oh, that's so cool. So Rose Alatini, 1890 to 1980, was born in Vienna to an Italian Jewish businessman diplomat and an Austro-Polish mother. Brought up in London, she studied music and wrote three well-received romantic novels. Despised and Rejected was published in May 1918 under the pseudonym A.T. Fitzroy. I don't know anything about her. 800 copies were sold before the book was deemed morally unhealthy and most pernicious. And the publisher, C.W. Daniel, a pacifist and Tolstoyan, was put on trial, fined, and ordered to surrender the remaining 200. What a crazy story! In 1921, Rose Alatini married the composer Cyril Scott, a fellow occultist. <gasps> And for the next, oh yeah, of course she's an occultist. And for the next few years worked closely with him and had two children in 1923 and 1926. In the 1930s, she published short stories as Mrs. Cyril Scott and three novels as Lucian Wainwright. She wrote nearly 30 more novels under the name Eunice Buckley. Okay, I've never heard of her. <laughs> wow, this is exciting. Now, what is the story about? Hmm. I think it's very feminist. I don't know. Despised and rejected. I don't know very much about it. It was first published in 1918, and it was originally published as by A.T. Fitzroy. And that's all I know about it. Oh, it's so about, it's about pacifism. Someone objecting to go to the front. <gasps> that's so amazing. I don't know uh, if anyone knows about the pacifist movement in the UK during the Second World War. My grandfather was a pacifist and he was imprisoned for his beliefs. So, I mean, I know everyone has different opinions about this sort of thing, but this is going to be fantastic. I'm definitely going to raid this person's bookshelf and read it. I'm going to go make some cookies and... I'm going to be finishing up these books and I will come back to just give you a little like concluding take on these uh, three novels. Christmas cookies. Getting in the spirit. I hope everyone's having a nice holiday. I think it's another weird year. I hope this coming year in 2022 is going to treat us all better. <laughs> Just speaking for myself. Oh, flushed. It's so hot. Hmm. Oh, if 
finish my book. It was gripping. It was so gripping and so good. So I finished something in the water. Very exciting. I'm going to fill you in on what I think about it. I'm going to sleep on it. I'm like, you know. Uh oh. I didn't set a timer for this one. Ah! Good morning. How's everyone? Hope everyone's well. I did it. I finished these books. They're all finished. So I got a package in the mail. Surprise. <laughs> and I am going to open it because, well, I think it's the last of the packages to come. I feel like I was so organized this year getting myself sorted out for gifts and Christmas. Uh, I feel like I'm really on the ball. So that's a good feeling. So let's see. Do, do, do. I feel like I should reveal it. It's going to be, it could be backwards. Oh, I think this is what, oh, I'm so excited if this is what I think it is. I didn't think that this was going to come before Christmas. And here we are. Where are we today? Oh, it's like the day before I'm going to post this vlog. <laughs> so we're Saturday the 18th. Yeah, it's getting, we're a week away from Christmas, everyone. We are one week away from Christmas. Can you feel it? We're one week away from Christmas and we're about to go into lockdown. Exciting times. Okay, so I'm going to do the reveal like this. This is what I just got in the mail. And I'm really stoked about it. Oh. Look at that. It's written by anonymous so I don't know if anybody else was extremely saddened by the news of I think a couple of weeks ago uh, the passing of Stephen Sondheim I'm sure everyone was broken broken it broke me and one of our favorite musicals in this house is Sweeney Todd I listened to it as a kid my uh, family listened to it and then I introduced it to my daughter and it's one of our favorites and I didn't realize this but I was visiting my dad and we were discussing it and it's based on no oh this is so cool can you I don't know if you guys can see the skull can you see the skull oh <gasps> what this is such a good copy okay so Tales of Mystery and the Supernatural, Sweeney Todd or The String of Pearls. So the story of Sweeney Todd was based on a serial. It says on the back, the, Str the String of Pearls, the original tale of Sweeney Todd, a classic of British horror, was first published as a weekly serial in 1846 to 1847 by Edward Lloyd, the King of the Penny Dreadfuls. One of the earliest detective stories, it became an important source for Bram, Stoke, Bram Stoker's Dracula. After 157 years of obscurity, it appears here for the first time in book form. What? This is so thrilling. And so I'm giving this as a Christmas gift from my dad because I was talking to my dad about this and he was the one who told me. Because I had seen an interview with Stephen Sondheim. Sorry, this is getting a little long-winded. I had seen an interview with Steve, or no, I had heard an interview with Stephen Sondheim being interviewed by Terry Gross where he talked about the first line of the play, which is, or the first line in the song of the play that says, attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. I won't sing it. <laughs> Attend the Tale of Sweeney Todd. And he was talking about the alliteration of that, you know, the attend, the tale, and Todd with the T's. And then he was also talking about how it it tells you just from that brief introduction that you're not in the current time. It's a tale, so it's set in the past. Anyway, he was speaking like very passionately about it. Just that one line. I'll link the interview to the, the, the podcast interview below. If there are any Stephen Sondheim fans out there or if there is anyone who doesn't know Sweeney Todd, you are in for a real treat. And then I was discussing it with my dad and my dad was like, oh no, well, he didn't write uh, Sweeney Todd. It was based on a book. And I was like, wait, I didn't know that. Oh, here we are. I feel like it's a real coup. I'm sure 
that she will know that it was based on this, but she certainly doesn't have the book. And I'm just really excited. I'm going to be giving it as the gift. Like we discussed it, my dad and I discussed it, and he's going to give this to my daughter. So it's really sweet. It's just a really sweet, it's going to be a really sweet Christmas moment. And I'm almost going to cry right now. Just, I just know it's going to be so sweet. So yeah, I didn't know I was going to cry when I started filming. All right. <laughs> Emotional much? The holidays do make people emotional, don't they? Let's put away the emotional lady and bring up the competitive version of my personality. <laughs> Team Nutcracker is in the lead, I think. In a pretty significant lead. First, I will just talk about the books and then I'm gonna go ahead and enter my points. I am still trying to figure out how I feel about this book. <laughs> I think that she was trying to do something really interesting and parts of it I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the middle of the book, which was the part that I had read from earlier about um, just dealing with grief. But there were things in this book that I just thought were so odd. Like at one point she's an artist's muse. An artist's muse, like an artist who she had no respect for and despised and it wasn't for money. There were a lot of things in this book that just went I can, over my head. And the ending was odd. Like I don't, oh, people really love this book. <laughs> Yeah, people I respect really love this book. Ooh. So the ending of the book, if anyone wants to avoid spoilers, if anyone hasn't read this book, because it was 2018 hit, uh, I'm just gonna say this about it because I still think there's more to think about it. The ending of the book is hopeful in the sense that our main character comes out of this hibernation, maybe doesn't come out of the depression. I'm not sure how we're supposed to expect that born better over it I don't know the expectation that you could get over something like that is kind of ridiculous because the book has that feeling of absurdity to it which I think is a valid comment I'm not gonna say that this was like a, a favorite read or I loved this book but I do think it was a really worthwhile read and I think that she was saying some really interesting things with it so I'm glad I read it yeah I'm still trying to figure out my thoughts about that one which is probably a good sign the idiot <laughs> which I really 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 liked this book I know that a lot of people think it's very pretentious and didn't like it nothing really happens in the conclusion of this story but I almost feel like I need to go back and reread it with only like there's so much to dissect in this book she makes so many references there are several layers to this book and I think I really love that about this book because I think it's sort of designed for you to reread it and reread it and reread it. So this time because of the readathon I listened to it on audiobook and I think that it was a little bit distracting in the end to read it to listen to it on audiobook I think I actually would have preferred to just read it sometimes when I listen to an audiobook I can get distracted she talks a lot about language in this book and she's a language teacher and I think that there she's saying quite a bit there about why we study language how we use language what it means like I feel like there's a whole other like undercurrent and story and commentary going on that I'd like to explore again and then there's the story of course about youth and uh, coming of age and academia and all of that kind of commentary which is great and witty and uh, the humor is very dry. There's also some commentary about family, identity, isolation or feeling like you're isolated from others, that you don't see the world the same way other people do. Like our main character, uh, Celine, really doesn't see the world the way the people around her see the world and she doesn't, she has a hard time coming to terms with that. So I think that this is something that I would like to come back to and read again because I think that there's more to this book than I was able to get out of it the first time. So a very different reaction than maybe some other people are, uh, have had to this book where some other people have just said, you know, this is a waste of space, just ramblings. I didn't feel that way at all. I, I want to return to it, I think, and read it again. But you know what? This is the first time this year I've read a book where that I want to reread it and reread it and reread it because I think I could get more out of it from a rereading it. Maybe this one as well. Like these two have that quality to them, which is unusual, I think. In that way, I think they're they're worthwhile reads. Now, 
they could just be spinning my wheels. I don't know, it could just be spinning my wheels, but I think there's more to those two than meets the eye. Something in the Water, I'm not gonna say how this book ends. It ends a little bit abruptly as well. This was such a nice new discovery for me. I'm very much looking forward to reading more of Catherine Stedman's work. I think because I spoke so much about this already in the vlog, there's not really anything more for me to say, except that if you're looking for a gripping mystery thriller, uh, this is certainly some an author that you should check out. And I'm definitely going to be putting her other two books. Uh, this The second one is called Mr. Nobody, and the third one is called The Disappearing Act. I'm gonna put them both on my wish list and TBRs for next, for the coming year. I had so much fun reading these books. Up next, I have three more books for the readathon. Up next, I'm gonna be reading The Overstory by Richard Power. Off to a cracking start. And what else? Oh, I'm gonna read Adapting to Moriae for the favorite author prompt. I don't know, I'm gonna pick a collection of short stories, I think, for the final one. And I think I'm gonna make it to reading all of them. So, oh, let's put in our points, shall we? Yeah. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you like this video, you know what to do. You ring the bell, you hit subscribe, you give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, maybe you should just keep it to yourself. So if you know, you know. I stood beside it. I stood behind. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this one's kind of funny looking. This one's legs got a little too far spread out. What?